Hello everyone, I'm the Nerdy Fool and welcome to Baldur's Gate 3, a game that I have been interested in playing for a while, but every time I was about to start, Larian would announce yet another update or patch, and so eventually I decided I would just wait for them to get done with all of their updates and patches so I could see the game in its best state with all of the improvements they were planning to make, and we're there now. So it is time to jump in and check this game out. I have done a bit of testing on my own, dabbled with a few characters. The farthest I got was about halfway through Act 1. Don't think I saw everything up to that point, but I have seen a bit. But after that, it'll be completely blind and I won't have a clue what's going on. So let's start by making a new character. My testing has all been unbalanced. I'm excited to try out Tactician just so I can see more difficult, challenging gameplay. So, bit of information about me. I have played D&D for almost 20 years now. I started with D&D 3.5 and moved on to 4th and 5th editions as they came out. I've played plenty of other tabletop systems as well. And while I won't claim to be a master of D&D 5th edition, I definitely am competent. I don't know everything, but I know it well enough. And I'm also not an expert of all things Baldur's Gate or Forgotten Realms lore. But again, I know a reasonable amount. I haven't played Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, so those will be new to me. Uh, but I have looked up a bit about their story, so I can generally pick up some of the references. Now here as we're getting into this cutscene, we have a Mind Flayer, or a Lithid, giving us a Tadpole. I don't actually know that much about Mind Flayers. None of my campaigns have ever delved much into them. So... It'll be interesting to see more. Same with Gith Yankee. Uh, I'm familiar with them... Vaguely. But not by any means an expert, because none of my campaigns have ever delved too much into the subject. It's such a gruesome scene. Who am I? I am going to play as a custom origin, Dragonborn. I'm interested to see how Larian Studios handles Dragonborn in the Baldur's Gate universe. So in my brief testing of the game, I haven't run into a single other Dragonborn, which makes sense because they are new to the world. Only about a hundred years ago, when Mithra was killed and the spell scar occurred, Dragonborn were transported from their planet to this planet, Toril. I'm also curious to see, because I think Gale's story involves Mistra a lot, from briefly what I've seen of his storyline, and so I'm curious to see how, if there's any connection, because Dragonborn being here is also tied very closely to Mistra's death and rebirth. So yeah, we're gonna go with a sorcerer. I want to play a charismatic character, uh, and sorcerer is the one that stands out to me. Male. Uh, cantrips. Let's just kill all those. We want friends because it's super useful. Shocking grasp. Uh, firebolt. And. What? Dancing lights because we don't have dark vision. I like both of those spells. Chromatic orb and magic missile are both awesome. Draconic bloodline because it amuses me. Dragonborn don't actually have draconic bloodline, usually, or they don't have a draconic ancestry. They were crafted by dragons to be their servants or slaves, and so they're not actually descended from dragons. But some mythos claim that their creation did involve dragons imbuing their own blood into them, so maybe. I'm gonna go with blue because A, it looks awesome, and B, Lightning is a pretty powerful magic from what I've heard in Baldur's Gate. So we'll be resistant to fire and lightning, which sounds pretty useful to me. 
background? Ah, uh, I don't know. So Dragonborn are servants and slaves of dragons. And while he's too young to have been on uh, Abir, their home planet being ruled over by dragons, he would have grown up with that mentality. I think I'll go with Noble. It's the most fitting that still gives skills that I like. And while I'm not a power gamer or min-maxer, I want to make a capable character. Let's see, drop intelligence, raise dexterity. I want to go down that far. Maybe something like that. So we still have some wisdom, so our perception isn't going to be tanked. Yeah. Um, deception, persuasion. History is really not important. Uh, is it history that I got for Noble? Yeah. And it's still a minus one? No. Because intelligence is a minus one, proficient in history should bring it up to a plus one. I can math. Negative one plus two is plus one. Religion, with a proficiency bonus, becomes a plus one. If I have a plus two for history... Yeah, persuasion, my plus three, or charisma, plus two. Why is history showing a minus one? There, it shows plus one here. Makes me uncomfortable. It's clearly a bug. Yeah, it's definitely showing plus one and plus five here. All right, uh, it'll take me a moment to do character creation or editing of appearance, but this is the general idea for the character. So this is our character. A gold dragonborn, blue dragon bloodline sorcerer. Varric. And now our guardian. So it's interesting to me that Dragonborn is not an option. That's clearly a deliberate choice from the devs. And I know a bit about how the guardian fits into the story. So I'm not going to spoil that. But I'm sure some of that is why Dragonborn isn't an option for the guardian. Also, it could just be that Dragonborn have only been in Faerun for a hundred years or so. So, yeah, they're just the newcomers. And this Guardian might just be older than that hundred years. I don't know. I'll take some time to build a character and I'll get back to you. I think this is my choice for the Guardian and Elf, Wood Elf. Yeah. We're ready to venture forth. I am very curious about all the dead mind players. What the story going on there is. Obviously, it's something we'll figure out with time. This scene definitely confuses me because it shows uh, Lazelle and our character specifically, potentially the others, were already on the Nautiloid, getting infected, etc. by the time they come here and attack this town, which I'm assuming is Baldur's Gate, but I don't actually know. But that means we were picked up somewhere else and infected separately. And here, they're collecting all these people, putting them in these pods. But when they show up, they're unconscious, and we were obviously awake. So, clearly, we are a separate group of people. 
from all these people they're grabbing now. And I want to know what makes us different or special or where we were picked up for and why we were treated different. Because that's what I don't know yet. Time will tell, I'm sure. And this whole scene is just epic. Larian did an excellent job on it. Watching the Gith Yankee fight. The dragons look super good. In my first time seeing this, I thought maybe they were here for Lazel, but they don't seem to be putting any effort to try and rescue her. So I think she just happens to be on the Nautiloid and they just happen to be attacking. Because Gith Yankee are the natural enemies of Lithids, so it's not terribly surprising they would go out of their way just to hunt down a Nautiloid just because it's there. they show the different teleportation methods also I think is cool where the Githyanki are creating these portals that they open up versus just the poof changing locations that the Nautiloid does it's pretty cool I don't know what the difference magically is supposed to be there looking at it from a D&D &D standpoint of is that a different spell being used? find ourselves in Avernus during the Blood War. So one of the problems I tend to have in playing these sorts of games is I often hoard resources. And I'm going to try not to, but I have a problem of using nothing but cantrips and then hoarding onto my actual spell slots and never using them. And I unfortunately do the same thing in actual D&D as well. Hopefully I won't have that issue, but I guess we will see. First, we're going to do some looting. We've got that mind flare down there. We've got a couple of things up here, and then we've got a chest over here. Take a bit of damage. Oh, well. And on to our first check of the game. This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Investigate the pool. Nice. Looks like it's going to be a good run this game. <laughs> the dice gods love me. The casing is fragile. The slightest touch could cause it to crumble. It's a hint that if you touch it, it might explode. But I think we want it gone anyway. So now all of those parasites are dead and can't hurt anyone else. Meanwhile, we've got this restoration pod that will restore all of our hit points. I feel better. It also restores all of our spell slots, so it acts like a full rest. And let's go through the sphincter because the word door didn't sound creepy enough. We've got a goblin over here with one gold coin. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. A schematic of a nautiloid flashes into your mind. Nerves, sinews, as much living being as ship. I'm going to be going through pretty much all the lore I can. Hopefully that's something you all will enjoy. Flash 
flash behind your eyes. Yeah, so I want to see everything this game has available. So I'm going to read all the books, talk to all the people, and really just dive in as deeply as I can. This is not going to be a speed run or anything. We're going to see what this game has available. Starting now with Mirnath. Mirnath. You don't seem to be doing so hot. <laughs> yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place, you'll free us. Please, before they return, they return. So you'll see sometimes we have skill checks and it doesn't bother having us to roll. It'll just do a secret roll on the side and we won't know what it was rolling for or how well we succeeded or failed, just whether we succeeded or failed. Who am I talking to, a man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Just seeing the tears, like this guy is still alive, but his brain is halfway to becoming a mind flayer, and I don't know how that affects his nervous system, but he's clearly not dead yet. Ugh. Investigation. Not a forte of ours. We've got a minus one, but we're going to attempt it anyway. See what we can learn. Not a lot. <laughs> nothing unusual about the brain so with my character I picture Varric to be the sort that he's going to generally try and do good as is natural who he is but he's not opposed to doing bad things to further his goals he'll use his enemy's tools i guess an aim of being good but willing to do bad which from what i've seen of the companion characters that we get is pretty similar they're all a bit emotionally mentally broken or damaged they all start a bit dark and I think you can take this storyline and help them get better. I believe that seems to be the direction it's going or not. And I think my character is going to be pretty similar. Even if he himself was never a servant of dragons, I think he grew up being raised by those who were and that has skewed his viewpoint. There's the idea that maybe the good deed would be to kill the intellect of power because it belongs to the mind flayers. But I don't think he'd be opposed to using his enemies tools against them. All that out of the way, let's attempt to gently prize the brain from the skull. We've got a plus two. It could happen. No! Of course not. That's how the dice roll. We'll leave it alone for now. Just because we can't pull it out doesn't mean we might not find a companion who could. I love this, where you can see this outside view of us flying over Avernus and the dragons fighting and lasers flying. I don't know what the lasers are, but it's cool. Together, 
We might survive. What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be geich, mind flayers. We're turning into mind flayers? There must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. So one thing Larian did that's different than base D&D 5th edition is that if your characters have initiatives that are together, even if the initiative roles weren't the same, they just allow you to pick and choose who you want to go when. Like you can have one character move, someone else can move, and then I can go back and do my actions. I can understand why 5th edition doesn't do that, but I do like that in the context of this game. It works well. Uh, I think I'm going to start with Magic Missile. So, on average, these guys all have 7 health, but on average, two Magic Missiles, I think, should be doing roughly 7 damage. So, 50-50 chance of killing it outright, and then doing damage to another. I could, instead, guarantee a kill, basically, by sending all three missiles, but I'm hoping... I'm risking with a hope that two will kill it. We'll see. No. Double twos. Minimum damage. Yikes. Time to strike. Pommel strike is non-lethal damage, so we won't actually kill it, but more likely to defeat it. Oh, and we still don't. We're getting some terrible rolls. Alright, just kill him. I'll pull back just to make it less likely they'll target me. They're not going to actually kill us, and there's another restoration pot up ahead, so it doesn't particularly matter. Then Lazel can just kill him. And we're done. You prove surprisingly adequate in Back to doing looting. Although logic would say I should probably let Lazel hold stuff because I do not have the carrying capacity. So normally I wouldn't waste all of my spell slots on a fight that simple, but we've got restoration here, so why not? Before you go up, we can have Lazel give a shot at freeing our intellect of our friend. So, yeah, the obvious choice as a Gith Yankee would be to destroy the brain. And I think that fits her character, but I'm going to attempt to pull it out anyway. Again, another failure on the investigation. Apart from this strange context, you notice nothing unusual about the brain. Let's see if she can pull the brain out. She does. The brain lifts from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. 
You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. That does sound like something Lazel would do. Usually I just spared it in my tests, but I think I like the idea of Lazel forcing it to be subservient. DC 15. Yikes. Nope. We miss it. So she just kill it? I don't know what happens here. Oh, it realized. So it doesn't aid us. Neat. And it just wanders off. Huh. Well, that's cool. We ended up freeing it, but it's not helping us, which is new to me. Do we run into it later? Keep going. Failed all three Arcana checks. What about you, Lazel? Nope. I want you to examine that. Let's check out this individual over here banging on this pod. Huh. Yeah, I've definitely not seen this. So this is what happens if you fail to, to take over Intellect Devour. Yeah, there's us, which is the name he goes by. Let's have her attack this one. Yarn, that means I'm in range. Or not. No attack of opportunity. Well, then we'll use our usual magic missile. Good miss. I will ascend. Back to what we were doing before. There's magic at work here. Determine what kind. So there's a sorcerer only option, which I'm going to attempt and succeed. I, it wouldn't surprise me if this isn't actually sorcerer only, if wizards and other arcane classes might have that option. This thing's magically linked to the console. Let me see what I can do. Appears dormant. Inscribe the device with the glyphs you've sensed from the pod's warding rooms. The console hums to life. Let's take a closer look at the powered up console. DC 10. So we need a 9 or better. Perhaps isn't the most confident answer, but let's put our hand on the console. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sense. 
sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. Will the pond open? Almost a guaranteed success. Like, I know it can fail, and it would be really weird if it does fail. Feel the biomechanical <laughs> brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. about Gith Yankee to know that they are not trusted. Got a problem with Gith Yankee. More that Gith have a problem with everyone else. But there's more important matters right now. Survival. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Did you feel what I felt just before? We were in each other's heads. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? Yeah, I'm Beric. Shadowheart. One moment. What's that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. Very well. One day I'll catch a break. We still need to... Figure out what to do about this device. Shadowheart, can you determine what this sigil says? Means nothing to me. So we've got Unleash, Aggression, and Unknown. Still alive. Well, let's Still click Aggression. Alright, Lazel. I am fury. I am death. And you just jump here. Perfect. One down. Life comes easy these days. Eighty percent. Nah, we'll just three magic missiles. Really easy fight. All right, we have two exits out of this room. We'll start with the one that the. Intellect of Hours came out of. Also, it's not the direction that our quest marker is pointing. And I like going the alternate routes first. How many hosts of these gay infect dazed woman is trapped inside the pod? She doesn't notice you. Well, we'll see if we can find a way to open her pod and let her free, like we did with Shadowheart. This might have one of those controls next to the pod. Maybe this. Place your hand on the console. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. That's different. That is super gruesome. Kainchar. Changed at the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this may be our fate. Yeah, I don't want that any more than you do. The newborn mind flayer stares at you, weak and dazed. Well, that appears to be everything in that room. 
believe we found a key, so let's see if it goes to this reliquary. And it does. And onward. Whatever comes, I'm ready. Before we go to the next area, let's make a minor change to Shadowheart's spellbook and give her a command. Just in case. I don't know if the dip will last long enough. No, I wanted Shadowheart. Dip in the fire. What to do? We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. King Yank. I have to keep going. The flaming effect is super cool. Oh, no. Weapons already went out. Okay. So the purpose of this section will be to kill and loot our way through and hopefully find a way to get this guy's sword and take it with us. For that we're going to try and get Shadowheart within range to command while someone else is nearby to pick up the sword and then we run off. I guess we'll move Shadowheart first because uh, she was in the way of Lazel's movement. Didn't quite kill. That'll be Shadowheart's turn. You could move to here, then dip your weapon again. And then attack. No, come on. And then still move as far forward as you can, which appears to be there. Good stun. Another step forward. All right, my usual magic missile attack. Super well done. Alright, you shoot him. Good damage. can finish him off. And you do. Okay, we made it. Good progress on the early enemies. I guess I'll send him around to do some more looting. Oh, come on. Well, you can dash. We're not doing anything important. 
Because there's no point in attacking either of them. We're not trying to win those fights through damage. You can easily beat them on lower difficulties, but on this difficulty, I don't think it's particularly possible. Let's try a command to drop. 55%. Nice. So if you could go over there and grab it. And then... Pack for opportunity, but he's unarmed. Which is probably worth it. Or... Attempt to shove him? Might as well give it a shot. And it succeeded! How about that? Well, that is an awesome turn for Shadowheart. Time to strike. And we'll just leave these two to their fight with each other. have new enemies that have suddenly appeared, teleported into existence as it were. Oh, survived by one. Shadowheart can do. On I go. Success. I am fury. I am death. You do how much with this? Two to seven. Okay. Doesn't matter. Damage. Awesome. <laughs> so you'll see we've got two more Cambians that have joined our initiative tracker. So even though we have 11 turns before we technically lose, if we take too long, we're still going to be in bad shape because of those two, because they will wreck us. Let's just get out of here. Dash, that's what I'm looking for. The Helm's alien transponder. You made it in time.
by pure luck, we seem to have activated the transponder that corresponds to the Forgotten Realms. Hey, friend. <laughs> that always amuses me. And this, I'm unsure of what caught us, whether that was our parasite, our tadpole, or whether some outside force intentionally caught us unclear to me, at least at this point. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Check yourself for injuries. That's the most important thing. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through, but it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. And with that, we have made it off the Nautiloid, somehow survived, though our companions are scattered, and we don't know where we are. And with that, that'll be the end of our first episode of Baldur's Gate 3. I hope you all had fun and enjoyed this, and we'll be back later to explore this beach, try and find our companions, and maybe new companions, and see what else this game has to offer. I will see you all then.